Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome, all uh, of our visitors in the audience today. It is just delightful to have you here and your input. Uh, any moment, Jose will arrive. And since it's five after, we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, I would love to go ahead with the uh, call to order. And when Jose comes in, Mr. Uh, Melendrez, we can confirm that at that time. Good afternoon, Executive Director Bruce Gilbert. Did you want to go ahead and proceed with roll call, or do you want to wait a couple more minutes for Jose? Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We, we can do the roll call, and then uh, when he comes in, simply indicate that he has uh, come in and is now present for the meeting, uh, which allows us to constitute a quorum. Uh, assuming that to be uh, all right with you, I'll go ahead and call the roll. Uh, Dr. Jameson. Here. Dr. Grinstein. Here. Ms. Lewis. I see you there. Here. Good deal. Uh, Ms. Wilson. Ms. Clark. And Mr. Melendrez is on his way. Uh, Ms. Aiello. Present. Uh, Commissioner Richardson is not here at the moment. And Ms. Reynolds. Here. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let the record reflect that Mr. Melendrez has now joined us, and we do have a quorum for this meeting. Excellent. There are no, uh, I have no announcement at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed with public comment. Bruce, did you have any announcements before public comment? Uh, we do not, Madam Chair. Do we, uh, we'll allow the North to go first. Do you have anyone up there for public comment? Uh, Madam Chair, there's no one for public comment here in the North. In our audience today, do we have anybody who would like to do public comment? Also, comma, we don't have anyone here who wants to do public comment. It seems that they have come to just show their support for our good work. We can therefore, with a quorum, proceed to the first order of business, the approval of the minutes for March 10th board meeting. We have a motion by Jose to move to approve. Do we hear a second? Second the motion, Levon Lewis, for the record. Thank you, Levon. Is there any discussion about the minutes? In view that there's no discussion, I would like to call for the vote. Everyone in favor of passing the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone in opposition? The minutes are approved, passed. I would like to now just dive right into our executive report. Mr. Bruce Gilbert. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board and guests. Um, as I indicated in my written report, last week I had the honor of being a panelist at the fourth annual Health Insurance Exchanges Conference, which was co-sponsored by Princeton University and the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics at the University of Pennsylvania. Can you hear me? We Barely. We, we've had some, some technical difficulties here. Let's see if we can make it a little easier for you. Is that better? Holy cow. <laughs> Testing one, two. All right, everybody here hold their ears. Yeah, it, that's better, though, is it? Whew. Try again. That's better. It's good up here. Can you hear me now? It is Go so ahead. much better down here. Thank you. As I was saying, uh, last week I had the honor of being a panelist at the fourth annual Health Insurance Exchanges Conference, 
co-sponsored by Princeton University and the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics at the University of Pennsylvania. It was quite a collection of individuals, um, certainly a lot of people a lot smarter and more accomplished than I am. Uh, and it brings together, the conference brings together senior officials from state insurance marketplaces, state insurance departments, and leading researchers from universities, as well as individuals from the private sector. Uh, a good portion of this year's program and the panel that I served on were focused on a topic that we discuss fairly frequently at our meetings, which is the future and sustainability of health insurance exchanges. Uh, as I point out in my report, Nevada was not the only state which was involved in these discussions. Other attendees included my friends from New Mexico, Colorado, Minnesota, Oregon, Rhode Island, uh, Idaho. Uh, additional attendees were there from the states of uh, uh, Maryland and New York. Um, many of our fellow states, I will tell you, share the same pain points and exasperations that we do. And I will share with you that it was very helpful for me to be able to sit down uh, with my uh, compatriots, if you will, informally as a group and talk about our present and our futures. Um, my primary and probably most important takeaway from the conference is really pretty simple. We are not alone. Uh, the struggles that we have gone through and the challenges that we face going forward are not unique to Nevada. We are all of us. Uh, learning by doing, finding our way, and making course corrections. And I think all of the states fully expect that to be the case over the next several open enrollment cycles. We are, in fact, a work in progress, not a finished product. And we face continuous transformation and, to a lesser degree, uh, reinvention. You know, when last we met, I had indicated, based on the issuance by CMS of the Notice of Benefit Payment Parameters, that we would continue to collect information on alternatives to remaining on the federal technology platform and utilizing their call center in order to both lower our technology costs and provide us with additional information through real-time reporting that would allow us to better target our marketing and messaging. I also indicated that staff would be prepared to recommend to the board whether we believed it in the best interest of Nevada's consumers to remain associated with healthcare.gov for the upcoming 2017 plan year. Well, after that meeting, we have held numerous discussions with CMS and all of our stakeholders, including the producer community, uh, the carrier community, and others, um, both internal and external, uh, to try and determine the best path forward to both chart a path to sustainability, but also to maximize the opportunity for a successful, successful transition, which might be even more important, frankly, in the short term. You know, as a result of those discussions, we believe, and I would report to the board, that the best course at this time is to continue to utilize the federal eligibility and enrollment infrastructure in 2017 and compensate CMS at the rate of 1.5% of pre-subsidized premium generated by on-exchange QHPs and standalone dental plans as sold through the exchange. Um, that is not a path lately chosen. The anticipated cost of remaining on the federal infrastructure in 2017 exceeds $4 million. But given the timing of the notice of benefit and payment parameters and the relatively short time that would be available to us to acquire and test a new platform, as well as to, to take the time to review all of the options which would be available to us, we believe this to be in the best interest of the exchange, of our carrier partners, and of Nevada's consumers. Uh, moreover, after reviewing our enrollment growth and financial projections over the next biennium, uh, staff believes that the 1.5% assessment can be met without any reduction in the historical level of spending on consumer education and outreach, our navigator program, or marketing. Um, we will continue over the next few months to review potential alternatives to the federal technology platform and call center, uh, looking to lower our costs and, of course, uh, access real-time reporting uh, to assist us in our marketing efforts and to assure our continued sustainability as a state-based marketplace. Our anticipation is that this additional information will be provided to the board, hopefully by July, along with a recommendation on the path forward to assure our long-term sustainability and success. Um, on another note, as you will hear, 
the exchange has been able to work with CMS on the rebudgeting of previously approved grant funds and has secured an additional $4 million to expend on off-cycle consumer education and outreach efforts leading into our next open enrollment. This is particularly important given that we, we are heading into an election year and the cost of advertising going forward during the open enrollment period is going to be significant. Um, these monies are specifically designated to allow an increased focus upon our underserved target populations in order to lay the foundation for greater enrollment and access, emphasizing the uh, value of coverage and the availability of premium subsidies to assure consumers that they can afford coverage. Uh, additionally, yesterday I spoke at the Northern Nevada Association of Health Insurance Underwriters, uh, the uh, brokers and agents here in Northern Nevada. I know Yvonne did that in, in Southern Nevada, I think, earlier in this week. And I will share with you that, that our relationship with the producer community remains very good and very strong. And they look forward to helping us as we move into our next open enrollment cycle. Um, obviously, the next few months are going to be a very busy time for staff. We've got a number of important decisions looming on the horizon. Uh, I'm confident that, that we will be able to provide the board with information necessary uh, to continue to protect the interest of Nevada's consumers and stakeholders to keep costs relatively stable in our marketplace and to assure that the exchange will be able to continue to provide access to quality affordable health plans to citizens throughout the state. And those would be my, be my remarks. Madam Chair, I'm happy to answer any questions. Executive Director Bruce Gilbert, thank you for that excellent report. If we look at our agenda, we can see that uh, you really uh, did cover one of the items we talked about putting on the agenda, either this time or next time, or as you say, you'll have more on moving forward uh, life without the federal exchange. Uh, I would like to open up to the rest of the board to see if they have questions since you brought it up here. Any further questions on that or anything else that you did bring up? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm Lewis. One, well, a couple of questions. One, uh, you mentioned that uh, you will, I believe, I heard this, have a recommendation of the commercially available platform that we may be able to use by July. Was Am I correct in, in hearing that? Uh, yes, Bruce Gilbert, for the record. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. You are correct. Uh, the reason for July is we want to give ourselves as much of a runway as possible heading into 2018. The one thing we want to make sure of is that we have the opportunity in the short term to review all of the options that might be available to us. But then once uh, we determine how we want to proceed, having enough time to be able to implement the system and test it significantly and rigorously. And so my hope is that by, by July, we should be in a position to make a specific recommendation. Uh, second question, Levon Lewis, for the record. Uh, are you at liberty to tell us who some of the commercial providers are that you are looking at, or do you feel that the answer to that question would be premature? So I'm Thank you, you Ms. Out. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Uh, Bruce Gilbert, for the record. Um, there are some fairly late entrants into this, and so what I'd like to do is just sort of hold off uh, for the moment on that. Uh, I know that the board is aware of at least two of the companies that I have uh, spoken to in terms of, uh, of h Centive and Newfields. I know that the board is also aware that I've met with uh, uh, the Connecticut Exchange and had some uh, opening discussions with respect to possibly uh, moving forward with them on a uh, an intergovernmental agreement of some type or a memorandum of other standing. So I, I think it's just a little bit early in the process. I, I probably need another month or so to work my way through, if that's all right. Okay. Uh then I have a third question in terms of the additional four million dollars that uh, has been made available from CMS uh, to do marketing in the underserved areas. Um, how do you perceive that that money will be spent, and will we be able to? 
get any additional assisters uh, with any of those funds. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Lewis. Bruce Gilbert, for the record. Actually, uh, Janelle and Penn are going to speak to that directly. What I will tell you is the, the, the money, the bulk of the money will be going to in-person assistance as well as to specific marketing efforts for defined populations. So I think that, that you'll be very pleased when you see what we intend to do. Uh, we've, we've spent some time with CMS. We, we spoke specifically about five particular uh, demographic groups that we think uh, should form the basis of additional uh, enrollment opportunities. And as I said, uh, Janelle and, and Penna should be able to answer those questions for you. Thank you, Levon, for those questions. Excellent questions. And thank you, Bruce, for we know you have been extremely busy with the in other groups, such as the New Field and the meeting with Connecticut. And I have no doubt when you recently met at the fourth annual meeting of the exchanges that you got additional information that was both helpful and now uh, adding to the process of making this uh, huge decision that we have before us. Since, as you stated last time, the governor has two requirements, one being that we make sure our platform, we don't go down the same path as Xerox. I appreciate your caution and the time, but also that you're still, and that we cannot do it this year, but that you're still really moving fast to rep up and have, as you say, a long runway to prepare to do it perfect transition because transition is so important. And I commend you in your process. I think you're doing an excellent job, and I also wanted to congratulate the team in obtaining the extra $4 million primarily for uh, reaching the uh, groups that uh, most need it. And were there any other questions our board had? Hearing no questions, I'm excited to hear what more we have to hear on the subject from Market and Outreach. Who will be starting? This is Janelle Davis for the record, and I'll be giving the marketing and outreach overview. Um, the Nevada Exchange, just to give you guys some background, uh, submitted a rebudget no cost extension on December 21st of 2015 to meet current and expected needs in regard to funding for consumer outreach and education. The funds were granted and extended through until December 31st of this year. The level two grant fund will allow the exchange to continue to outreach and educate unreached populations in Nevada. The new notice of grant reward should reflect remaining grant authority, which is roughly over the $4 million, as mentioned, in consumer outreach and education. Um, as Bruce mentioned, the exchange will be collaborating with various stakeholders to work on an off-season campaign in order to reach our underserved and underinsured target populations. We will be focusing on tribes, rural areas, multicultural entities, the Hispanic population, the self-employed, and millennials. We will continue to work to better identify these consumers still uninsured and how, what the best channels to reach them are. The exchange is committed to educating Nevadans about gaining quality health insurance and identifying new enrollee audiences. The exchange will do so through outreach, gaining various stakeholders throughout the state, advertising and PR. This will be a full-fledged, thoughtful campaign. We are currently in the process of creative concept development with ideas to incorporate consumer testimonials and add those onto our Nevada HealthLink website. The goal is to educate and continue awareness within Nevada for those individuals who still do not have health coverage as well as reach those underserved target populations previously mentioned. We want to continue our brand awareness through advertising and outreach events while also mark making sure Nevada consumers understand their benefits and what they can do to prepare for open enrollment this coming November. All off-season campaign strategies will carry on through open enrollment, creating a nice transition between campaigns. Um, I'd like to introduce Penna Powers, and they'll provide you with an overview of our strategy, but I also want to mention that um, they will present a cohesive creative uh, concept of the off-season campaign at the next board meeting with the creative elements. Thank you, Janelle.
Good afternoon, Patty Hallibuck with Penna Powers for the record. And I'm going to quickly expand on what Janelle has laid out for you, give you some strategy, insight, and tactics for our off-season marketing campaign. Quick reiteration of our objectives. The plan is to identify our new enrollee audiences throughout the state of Nevada. Uh, we intend to educate and actually change perceptions about their necessity for health insurance. Our other objective is to build awareness of Nevada Health Link as a resource for health insurance for Nevadans. All this is in anticipation of our goal for next enrollment period, and that is to position the exchange to be able to achieve 100,000 or plus enrollees. So who are we talking to? To expand on what Janelle said, we're talking to uninsured and underserved populations within the state. Our primary focus will be on the Hispanic as well as Asian Pacific and Islander populations, tribes, the rural communities, millennials, the older demographic that consists of 50 plus self-employed early retireds and other ethnicities and cultures and diversities throughout the state. We feel there are still significant opportunities to talk directly to these audiences and educate them and help change their perceptions. How we intend to reach these audiences Outreach is a key component for this campaign. We are in the process of retooling our event strategy to not only reach these audiences, but educate them directly within their communities using grassroots tactics. We want to be able to talk to them in the field to answer their questions and change their perceptions. We're also in the process of strategizing and identifying stakeholders these would be established credible entities statewide that share a common cause who we can partner with in meaningful ways to build awareness and education. These would be groups in healthcare, education, work-related groups, ethnic and cultural diversities and groups, and even business and media partners. PR and media relations will also play another large role we are putting together a cohesive communications plan. We will be utilizing Bruce Gilbert as the exchange spokesperson. We'll continue to build a strong and affirmative image for Nevada HealthLink, both in the off-season and leading into enrollment. The PR plan will be comprehensive. We will, it will allow us to be able to react professionally and appropriately to both issues and opportunities as directed by the exchange. We laid a great foundation with social media for the last enrollment campaign, and we are continue, continuing to utilize social media to continue that conversation in the off season. We want to continue to build our follower base, and we want them to see Nevada Health Link year round, not just during enrollment. As Janelle mentioned, we will support all these activities with advertising. We are working on concepts right now that may take a testimonial style messaging uh, to help portray the virtues of having health insurance, speaking to the lifestyle benefits. This is a format that enables us to build over time and can actually incorporate real testimonials from enrollees as we move forward. A brief marketing timeline of our elements that you'll see on the next page, page four, for outreach, uh, event strategy and, pla and planning is ongoing, as well as events. They, will, they have begun actually in February and will be gaining full steam um, in the next few weeks and, and moving forward through the spring and summer months as well into the fall. Same with stakeholders. We are doing a lot of intensive strategizing and identifying those stakeholders. And we will begin planning to, uh, roundtables and various meetings to address and engage those partners. Social media is also underway with organic posts. We've also developed an email database plan where we can begin to capture the email addresses of our followers so we can continue conversations on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis with these groups. We're also doing some paid social media as well. As I mentioned, PR media relations will play a, a large role, and we are developing our communications plan 
in accordance with Janelle and the exchange. Uh, we, statewide media relations will be integrated beginning in May. And we will also begin to measure the share of voice. And that is how much, basically, Nevada Health Link has talked about in the public. We want to start uh, measuring that and, and create a benchmark for that. As Bruce had mentioned earlier, this being a political year, some of our advertising media tends to skyrocket. So we want to be very mindful of the media that we're using. We had great success with digital media last year, and we see that being an integral part of our advertising campaign this year. Not only is it extremely targetable, it's very affordable, and it can be optimized throughout the campaign. That said, we still intend to include traditional media, things such as radio, TV, print, as appropriate. However, we'll take a lot of emphasis away from TV because of the costs related to the political season and how they increase. So we want to be very mindful of our dollars. Also in the works, um, Janelle, and, and in, in accordance with Janelle, she's leading some branding standards and implementation efforts as well as some web, website efforts with KPS3. So we are supporting her in those roles as well as working collaboratively with KPS3 to implement um, a cohesive marketing look and feel for the campaign. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Very thorough and very good report. Do we have any questions on that report? Um, just quickly, uh, in, in the outreach efforts, and I know you guys are doing a lot of different things, but um, if you have identified, any, what, what have been some of the negatives? What has, in terms of outreach communication, has anything come forward that, that, um, that you're finding as there's those, these things that we need to think about how we address them in reaching out to some of these communities? If you don't mind, I'm going to bring Andres up. He's our outreach expert, and he can speak a little more in depth about that. Welcome, Andre. And for the record, um, Madam Chair, for the record, Andre Ramirez with Ramirez Group and with Bennett Powers. Um, just to, I'd like to clarify the question: Are you asking what trouble we're hearing from consumers who may have complaints, or are you asking about trouble we have trying to get to certain markets? So I think we do a really good job of getting the word out, right? And so when somebody, like if somebody calls your office and they want more information, or you know, what kind of what kind of things that would still be might there? Are they still hesitant? Is there anything? Are you hearing anything like that in terms of that there still might be hesitancy, hesitancy about going forward with this, applying for this? You know, have those things. I mean, I'm, I'm asking this in the third year, I know, but you know, has is any of those things still coming forward, or are you hearing anything about that? So the biggest obstacle we still have is just lack of awareness and understanding of the program, which is why these outreach programs are so important. There's still so many people who don't even know that Nevada Health Link is an exchange and part of the Affordable Care Act. They don't know that we offer affordable quality plans for them. They don't know that they can enroll during special enrollment periods um, or during the open enrollment periods. There's still a lot of misunderstanding regarding the process, um, and a lot of people still don't understand that Nevada Health Link is a state government agency. Um, so there are things that we're working on and. We're proactively trying to make sure the community knows that we are a state agency, that we provide services for them. Here are the resources that are still available. Uh, I mean, obviously, we've done a pretty decent job of reducing the uninsured rate, but there's still a high percentage, and most of them just still don't understand. Uh, they're not aware of the process. Thank you. Thank you so much. And when you were saying that, Jose, I also, uh, on first take, thought he was addressing that having done everything you did, were there any other ideas that might have come up that you could do in the future? Do, is there anything new? Uh, Janelle and Patty have been leading a good strategic planning process over the past few months. Uh, we've been engaging in a variety of conversations about what else could we be doing that we haven't thought of? Um, using some local celebrities that could be a spokespersons that help us to reach some of these audiences that haven't uh, committed yet. Uh, coming up with different approaches, approaches and partners with some community groups 
that we haven't established yet. Uh, Janelle mentioned about the stakeholders list that we're putting together of proactively reaching out to community members and organizations we should have partnerships with that still don't exist. So we are doing a very aggressive reflection of what we feel has worked, what's still missing, um, where can we continue to push the levers to push this. Um, Janelle's been very, uh, I'm sorry, Janelle and Patty have been very aggressive about identifying uh, some social media uh, celebrities in Nevada to help us reach millennials. We know they have some people here in Nevada that have huge followings uh, that maybe we can partner with to help us reach that audience. Uh, that's something we haven't done before and that we're considering. Um, so we're definitely looking at all the options and we're engaging in conversations. Um, been very um, pleased with the process that Janelle has put in place to allow us to reflect and plan ahead of time. Um, we've been engaging in these conversations for months now, which gives us a great opportunity to implement them before the next open enrollment. Excellent. The celebrity idea sounds very interesting. I think one of the things we enjoy a lot here in Las Vegas is the little video when you're getting on board the plane in the security where they have our local celebrities and everybody does connect to it. If we could get a local celebrity to convey the message, I think it's a great idea. We had such a phenomenal positive reaction to our politician celebrity, Governor Sandoval, when he did that. So I think it's very interesting. I think, does that complete your report? Janelle, Patty, Andre? Okay, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Messaging is literally the heart of it. Well, getting our people out there to find out about us, be aware, and enroll. And you're doing an awesome job messaging this community, Nevada being the community. Thank you. We are rapidly coming to a conclusion. And I'm going to take this op opportunity to ask if anybody has a discussion of possible actions regarding date, any possible actions, uh, dates, times, and agenda items for the future. Hi, Lois, for the record, and I think we've asked a few questions that will, you know, we would expect to get answers from and they, at future meetings, um, and so I assume our next meeting will be next month. Yes, and I think uh, we understand that uh, the, the big answer on the platform moving forward may not come till July, as you pointed out. Um, were there any other comments, uh, questions? Uh, I would also like to see... Um, a tentative uh, marketing plan, particularly for uh, uh, Hispanics and other ethnicities, uh, just to see what is being planned uh, going forward uh, in order to um, do outreach to those groups that we have not reached so far. And, and this is Janelle Davis for the record, and the creative concepts are being developed and have just recently been presented to me, and so you actually see that entire marketing plan at the next board meeting, and then you can have probably more solid questions at that time. Excellent. We'll look forward to that report, Janelle. Hearing nothing more, any questions in the north? None, Madam Chair. Hearing no further questions or comments, we'll go ahead and ask again if there are any public comments in the north. There are none. Are there any public comments here in the south? Please, Len. Len, if you could just, uh, for the record, even though we know you. I'm not used to public speaking with a microphone. As a broker, I'm just concerned whether we will have to re-enroll those people that have already enrolled as we have done in previous years, or will this be an automatic 
re-enrollment of the folks that are already enrolled. Len, uh, usually we'll listen to your comments and questions. We're not allowed to answer, but um, I think this is just a, a quick little procedural uh, answer that Bruce could give you very easily if he chooses to. Thank you, Madam Chair. As I understood the question, to be honest with you, the system was not working as well as it might, and I don't want to misstate the question. So, Len, would you be kind enough to go ahead? Uh, do me a favor, please. Identify yourself for the record and then ask the question again, if you would. Len Barron, individual broker, Las Vegas. I was concerned that over the previous years, we've had to re-enroll our existing clients in the system again. I was under the impression that for the 2017 or 16 open enrollment period, we would not have to do that. I'm just trying to get a confirmation, yes or no. Uh, um, so thank you, uh, and Bruce Gilbert, for the record. Uh, we will be on healthcare.gov for the 2017 open enrollment cycle, which means that it's not, it's not a situation where you have to actively enroll every single client again. There's the opportunity for automatic re-enrollment. That's what I was asking. Thank you, sir. There we go. Thank you, Bruce. I think everybody's happy to hear that. Were there any other questions? With no other public comment, I would like to thank board members, our audience for attending, and all the staff for joining us today, and uh, wish you to have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.